Everyone, give your full attention to the podcast of Destiny. Can you do it again? I know you are doing it. Alright, hey, how's everyone doing? <laughs> Alright, hey, you guys ready for that big welcome that you meant to do originally? Yeah. Oh yeah, get together for the podcast of Dustin. Yeah, thank you very much for coming out. Yes, we made it. We fucking made it. The hearse was mentioned five million times. I know there's a coffin in there. We tried to move it. It's heavy as fuck. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is cool. Thanks for coming out, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it, we, we worked on this festival for about three months, and um, it was a su success. And I want to thank all of you guys so much. Give yourselves a hand right now. I'm on shrooms, so. So yeah, this is Podcast of Destiny, episode... One second. Episode one second. This is Podcast episode... 13. Yeah. I want to thank everybody who's watching. I want to thank everybody who's, who's supported my YouTube channel. Anybody who has supported me as a comedian, as a friend. Anybody who has... Uh, been there for me when I've gone through some tough times, like when I cried at Devil's Advocate four times. I have been sober from alcohol for two and a half years. But I have been vaping the shit out of some fucking weed, though. That's what's up. You know, this has been a very fucking amazing day for me. I had about a uh, hundred people back here, it seemed, at, at one point. I was worried about this festival not going so well. I was worried about things... <laughs> Sorry. Can't even get the bag open. Yeah, guy that'll open it for you. It's gonna be on YouTube. You need water. YouTube, drug use, try me. Demonetize. I got 93 subscribers. I also want to say, Jack Black, if you're listening. I'll explain. <laughs> it's like, it's it's Destiny, you know. It's like this. It's a pick of Destiny. I ripped it off a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you guys ready for uh, the guests to come out? You guys ready for the guests? Yeah. You know, these uh, guests that I'm gonna have uh, right now have been uh, very cool to me. Have been uh, very good friends in the comedy scene. Um, I've known them uh, for a long time. Um, they all performed on my festival today. Um, they all crushed it. And um, I want everybody to give a giant, humongous, warm welcome to Rob Maybe, Kim Han, and Chudir Go. What are you doing for the message? <laughs> too many feelings, Dustin. Too many feelings. Oh my god, here it's gonna start it, right it now. It makes me feel uncomfortable, just so you know. <laughs> like people are saying nice things about me not sarcastically. Uh this feels bad. Uh I knew I was okay, so I knew I was gonna have Rob uh, you know, probably roasting me this whole entire time. I didn't do it though. <laughs> and then I was gonna have Life's roasted you. Plenty. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. All right, Rob, absolutely not. Uh, it's Rob definitely when I'm feeling confident. Just, uh, that's my go-to roast. <laughs> Dude, thanks for having me here. This show yeah, was yeah. a lot of fun. Everybody give her a Rob Maybe, everybody. Yeah. And everybody uh, get up for Kim Han. Kim Han to, to the right you, of, Kim, of Rob. What's this podcast about? Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, it's about a free a form. Of cats and kittens, you guys. It's just free. It's like improv. It's like free UCB. 
<laughs> this is, so that means we're not getting paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that means that uh, your parents uh, paid for uh, improv classes. And yeah. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe the UCB would host comedy shows and they'd be like, sorry, we can't pay you. We just made $5,000. Like, that's so that's fucked insane. up. And it's also insane that they give out degrees. Like, you graduated from the university if I made shit up for three months. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Mom, Dad, come to my graduation. Yeah, we all kind of judge improv people a little bit, don't we? Am I just the only one that when they're like, yeah, I've been doing comedy for nine years, and I'm like, oh, really? They're like, well, improv for eight and a half. I just started stand-up, and I'm like, that's why I don't like you. <laughs> and I think we judge them because they have, like, a group, you know? They're like a boy band. So if they fail, it's like a group fail. <laughs> yeah. Whereas if you're a stand-up, you eat shit. You have to stare into everyone's eyes. Yeah. And you slowly. It's like a lot of more, a lot more respectful, right? Uh, respectful. Yes. Ones. I felt like I heard Lou Moon say, "I do improv." <laughs> <laughs> I did hear that, right? <laughs> My ears work better than your legs. Uh. Oh, 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 oh my god. I actually can't hear you right now. Sorry. He was moshing earlier. He's okay. Dude, can we talk about the mosh pit? The mosh pit broke out, and it was at one point it was just Dustin, Cam, and someone I didn't know. Three people that were just back to back to back, just rotating because they were like, we just need to stay close to each other. Like they did it for a total of nine minutes, and then they all got tired and just started headbanging. You can see they all looked at each other. We're like, we're done, right? We're done. <laughs> Kim Han, you got anything to say about that? You, uh, I just wanted to not get hurt by the mosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slowly backed away. Yeah, they never look like fun. Yeah. I've it, never seen a mosh, but I've been like, I wish I was there. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's how, uh, yeah. How many people got tetanus tonight? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the girls had like a bathroom that was actually in like a building. But uh, most of the guys just went around to the side of that RV to piss, and I'm pretty sure I stepped on nine rusty nails. <laughs> so if I stop mid-podcast because I can't open my mouth, please just get me to a doctor, you know? Yeah, like Tom Whalen came out here from L.A., and we were going like, to give him a place to stay last night. And he said, no. no he, <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't find a hotel. And uh, I was like, oh, you could stay at our place. And he's like, I was like, we got a bed. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh, that sounds comfortable. I, I go to this fucking shed. I start bringing out a shed bed. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is like a, a low-budget Doug Stanhope compound. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, except people aren't waiting outside to meet me or anything like that. <laughs> Unless you count the police. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy the cops didn't come tonight. There was too yeah, many Yeah, everybody, everybody give it up for the uh, next door neighbor for not being a psycho tonight. <laughs> That's the very moment he called the police when he called him a psycho on a microphone. Um, uh, a little switch. Uh, I want to. I want to. I want to talk about how Kim Con. We were. We were all hanging out back here watching. Uh, the new King Kong vs. Godzilla movie and <laughs> Kim Kong, what do you think that the name of the movie was? It was like, it was like, uh... What was it, Lou? What did Kim Kong think that the movie was called? It was like, oh, this is, oh, this is that, uh... It was... Oh, uh, King Kong versus Kong. Kong, yeah. Kong versus Gorilla. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, this is that new uh, movie, King Kong versus Gorilla. Because it's one gorilla and then one slightly smaller gorilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was terrible. The movie's terrible. That uh, sounds like gorilla domestic violence. Like it just sounds like a dad gorilla beating up a child gorilla. <laughs> He didn't make the soccer team, and Dad is pissed. You know? <laughs> Kim, um, you I noticed like on your Instagram a lot that you're like just in the middle of nowhere <laughs> a lot of the times, just like showing like la beautiful like landscapes and things like that, which is fucking amazing. But um, yeah, I mean, do you like going and traveling and stuff like that, and seeing the the, the wild and nature like that a lot? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's funny about this, but I just like <laughs> I I just like to go hiking and then take photos and then show the photos and um yeah you're right nothing I funny know. Know. <laughs> i don't know where that could go i thought he was that. doing an intervention he's like so we see on, on social media a lot that you don't have a place to live so we have a bus <laughs> you can have the shed that tom wouldn't take yeah 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 you want you think about moving into the shed, Kim? You two hundred fifty bucks a month or something like is that? It which shed is? That? <laughs> <laughs> what, is there? A, uh, no, no, no one a lives potty in, potty the in there. What's in there? The shed is made of gold, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's you can't stay in the shed. Um, 
I mean, we might I turn it was weirdly <laughs> sexist. He's like, we offered it to Tom, but not you. <laughs> you have to have a penis to sleep in that shit. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> what are some crazy things going on in the news right now? QAnon? <laughs> Dude, QAnon? Did you guys watch that documentary? Which one is there's The a bunch. HBO five-part, six-part documentary thing? At the end, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but at the end you just go, oh, all these people are fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There's people who think that, uh, that Trump is still president right like a secret president and they think that like biden and all of them got arrested like we're supposed to get arrested on the second or whatever yeah dude that doesn't make any sense at all any sense like, at all yeah you know he he complained about how he he lost the election because he, they cheated but now he's still president he's just not letting anybody know that's like oh, okay yeah also i'm still married i'm just not letting anybody know you know <laughs> Oh, that's who, who, fucked up. Are you, do you usually lean right, more right or left, Rob? You're looking at me? Come on. Uh, I'm left, dude. I've always been poor, so I've always been democratic. Uh, <laughs> hasn't reached that tax bracket yet, but come soon, you guys. Dude, the moment. <laughs> Once he makes money. 80 grand a year, it's going all the way around. Yeah, I made 90 grand a year at one point. Oh, shit. Sure. Fucking when I first started comedy, I did a joke about it. I said, uh, I, said uh, I, I voted for Obama because I'm democratic, and... Uh, during the re-election 2012, I was like, yes, hoping for change, you know, blah, 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 blah. I go, 2013, I started making money, and I was like, I would like to see his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that only works when Obama was in office, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't think there's any amount of money that could get me to, to like, hate minorities. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing over there, Shudir Gow? You doing good? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm you doing, did, I'm doing lovely, yes. Um, this is a great panel. Right now. I felt like you, you went deep voice on him. Like, he was like, how you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks like a panel I, for like I a... put it for effect, so it's... Like a nature cool. documentary or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Chudir, have you been doing uh, stand-up for a while? Like, uh, uh, you're relatively new, but what, like a couple years now? Right? One year. One year, one year. Everybody get for Chudir for doing a, one year of stand-up. Yeah. yeah. You know, through, through COVID and everything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Did you you start it through, like, at the beginning of uh, all this yeah, stuff? Yeah, January of last year at Grand Ave Pizza. John oh, Harrison shit. Yeah. Yeah. Good shouts out to Grand Ave. Great Ave. It's a great place. Josh yeah. Harrison is great. My, my dad, you guys. Josh Harrison is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Harrison, a local comedian. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for filling in the 92 <laughs> viewers on YouTube. <laughs> Hey, 93 subscribers. But, yeah, uh, no, but one of them is Josh Harrison, so he yeah. knows who he is. Yeah. He'll know his son was on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to ask all three of you, what's like the craziest thing you've ever seen happen at like an open mic or a comedy show? Like oh, whether you. it's <laughs> whether it's like something embarrassing happened to a comedian or something like that or like some, oh, kill, uh, kill Tony. Two stories. Uh, no, I mean, kill Tony. I don't, when, when you were like, we're going to do a live podcast, I'm like, I hope Dustin storms off this one too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, so two stories. On Monday, I choked a guy out. Um, <laughs> at an open mic. Everybody's heard the story, I think. But uh, there's video. I'm going to post it eventually. He sucker, he sucker punched me. So I choked him. And then Tristan was like, hey, remember where you're at. And I was like, all right. And I let him go. But... Uh, Another time. Where was that at? Where was uh, that? Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate. Oh, good. Devil's Advocate. I talked about crying there a bunch of times earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Devil's Advocate, or what I call Dustin's Cry Chamber. Yeah, yeah. He's got a booth reserved. It just comes with Kleenex. <laughs> uh, Can I say, before you continue that, I gotta say, when, one time I, when I was really drunk there I, and once and uh, I was belligerently drunk getting really emotional and crying and fighting with everybody and stuff and this girl so a typical Monday <laughs> a typical Monday <laughs> And this girl was there, and she had sage, right? And she was taking the sage, and she was putting it in front of me, like, saying, like, calm down, pretty much. And I went, get that shit out of my face. That's just fucking lame. And then she went, I'm not going to stand for this. That guy just said that sage was gay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying that sage is gay. You were just I'm saying it's fucking it. lame. Whatever. <laughs> sage isn't lame, by the way. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, continue with your... You were just backtracking <laughs> on everything tonight. So I, you I, almost I, choked I, a guy out at Devil's Out no, yeah. this month? I did recent choke Monday? Up. Yeah, yeah. Holy but, shit. Can but you the better story, the craziest thing I've seen is uh, 2015, there's a guy named uh, Mike Kennedy at the time. He was he was like the hot shot of Phoenix comedy. He okay. was booked at all the clubs constantly. Yeah, like 
Yeah. We're doing the show at a at a bar that has like an outside area and a stage, and he has a bad set. And it's because everybody sat so far away that he's just not connected with them. So it's a wireless mic. So I go and start sitting with groups of people and talking to them. I'm having a better set. He turns on a second wireless mic, and he starts just talking shit to me from it. He's like, he's like, Rob, uh, you can end your Tinder date now. And so I start talking shit back to him because why? Why would you do that? It's your show. You're a fucking dickhead. You know. And at some point. He says something, and I go, Mike, do you want to fight? It seems like you want to fight. And he goes, he goes, no, I won't fight you because you grew up with blacks. <laughs> and, yeah, that's what the crowd said, too. And then he was like, oh, no, I'm just saying they know how to fight real well. And I was like, you're not helping yourself, Mike. And this chick stands up, and she goes, my husband's black, white lady, bigger lady, you know. And she fucking, <laughs> she grabs a pool stick and walks up and hits Mike with it while he's on stage. And then a whole fucking fight broke out. There's video of that too. I will find it. You can put it up in a, like a corner here of the podcast. Zach, uh, that was that was the craziest thing. It was like 2016. Zach Fish, the host, is probably like, God fucking damn it! There's always shit happening here. That wasn't even at Zach's. I would have loved for that to be at Zach's, just so Zach could be like, I guess I just bring fights to things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what about you, Kim Khan? Have you seen anything crazy or like fucking, you know, intense happen at a comedy show or an open mic or something like that? I will just tell you something that happened to me. I went, the stage was like one of these, uh, in the back of a sake bar. So it was just kind of one of these kind of hipster, you know, shows. And, um, the platform, the stage was a wooden platform and I went to walk step onto the stage while fist bumping the host and ended up tripping and almost going back it was like there was a garage doors that were in the back and like I almost like went through the garage doors as I'm going on stage just falling onto the stage and everybody's like <gasps> and um you know how'd your set go? <laughs> they felt sorry for me, so it went great. They were like, let's just smile and laugh, you know, laugh. A pity laugh is still a laugh. Yeah, it is. It worked. It worked in my favor, so they, they were nice to me after that. So. What about you, Junior? I would say, like, a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't that great, but a couple of weeks ago, I got heckled, which happens in comedy. But I was at Tavern, and this old drunk guy was heckling me. Like, after one of my jokes, because I do a lot of one-liners, he would be like, tell another one. And then I'd be like, what? and then I started trying to do crowd work. I was like, how drunk are you? And I got to go, can you, even, can you even go home? Like, you can't drive for sure. And then he comes on stage. He goes, I got a couple jokes for you. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right? I don't need your jokes. And then he starts leaving. And I go, yeah, go ruin your family with your alcoholism. <laughs> And then he walks back, and I'm like, ah, like herpes, he always comes back. And then he comes back, and he goes, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. And he's this, like, really old white guy. He's, like, 70 <laughs> and, like, hunchback. His liver's probably shot. And I, I go, please, I would love to. It would make my night if you try to beat me up. <laughs> and then he goes, meet me outside, and walks out. <laughs> and I remember, like, when I started making fun of him, the whole crowd went, oh. And I'm like, he's ruining my night. <laughs> I, like, had a meltdown. I was like, this guy sucks. You're on his side. Dude, to be but, fair, when he started heckling, it was the most polite heckling. He was just going, do another one. You're very funny. <laughs> and you're like, it fuck was. you, buddy. I'm like, suck Your my wife's dick. leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids don't call you anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's the craziest. So. <laughs> Dustin, what's your craziest experience on Kill Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Twice. I've been on there. I've been on it twice. I've had a bad time on there, and I had a good time. But it's, both times I got roasted to shit. You know, both times. But uh, the first time was pretty miserable. You know, uh, you know when I first moved out to LA, uh, first time ever being up at the comedy store, pretty much. And that was a brutal one. You can watch that on YouTube. Uh, and there's a second one at Stand Up Live where I did pretty good in my minute or whatever. But then uh, they proceeded to roast me for like 15 more minutes. Dude, because you pointed out. Hold on. First off, good storytelling, no details whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I was on Kill Tony once, it went bad. Also, a second time, it went bad as well. Uh, the, but the second time here in Phoenix, you had a good set, man. I was super happy for you because I was like, finally, he's not going to delete Facebook again. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> But then, as soon as the set was over and you started interview, the, the interview process, you literally went, do you remember me? 
I was the guy you shit on so much the last time. And I know why you did it, because you were like, look how, how far I've come. But then they went, oh yeah, you are that guy. Let's do that again. Yeah. That was when I used to fucking get really fucking drunk, you know, I know. Like before I did comedy. Crying and, Dustin. Yes, cry. I used to, I used to not be able to handle my alcohol very well. Uh, that's a, it's an understatement for sure. Um, <laughs> and, have you guys ever had any problems with alcohol, <laughs> Rob? <laughs> <laughs> when you're out in front of a Circle K pumping a cigarette. <laughs> uh, yeah, all the time. Uh, I have a full beer. No, no, I've never, I've never been addicted to anything but cigarettes, and I've been, I've been trying to quit cigarettes for like two years. And it is not working. Don't fucking show me that vape. That vape. That's using it. That's like using a dildo when you want to get fucked. You know, like it's good. And it, it's good if it's the only thing you have. But like, I want a fucking cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember at Devil's Advocate when uh, me, you, and Ross, and that other short little guy did a shirtless roast battle? Yes, I do remember <laughs> yeah, yeah. that. Who, who was here? Was anybody here for a Devil's Advocate for that night where we did the shirtless roast battle? All right, no. Okay. Yeah, for, for a while at Devils, once it got to be like 115 when Dustin was still running it, he would just be <laughs> hammered. He would just be hammered and be like, "We're turning this into roast." And then it was just weird people roasting. I roasted a server from the Tempe Improv one time, and he was like, "I work at a comedy club. I got you." And I think I made him cry, and I felt really bad about it. <laughs> That's all the vulnerability you're getting from me tonight. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Um, I wanted to get in a little bit of your guys's like. Uh, uh, early, you know, life um, where you grew up, uh, things like that. Um, uh, Trudy, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Arizona? Uh, I grew up in the Midwest, in like Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My family moved around a lot, so I went to like eight schools by the time I graduated high school. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of moving. <laughs> always, always being the new kid, and I feel like part of the reason I even became a comedian is because I was like the new kid, but I was very quiet. So I'd sit in the back, and I'd always say like a funny line, and I'd say it to someone else, and they would say it and get the laugh, like yeah. that Kim Pill sketch. Yeah, <laughs> that was literally my whole childhood. I feel like that's ninety percent of the reason why I do stand up. Yeah. What if Key went to school with you and he stole that sketch idea from a joke you said in class? <laughs> I, I also moved around a lot. I think that's a common thread with comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. I did the same too. I now Kim's going to pop in and be like, I lived in one place my whole life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lived in one place. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did you grow up, Kim? I grew up on a farm, kind of just in the middle of nowhere in Indiana. Oh, shit. Okay. Any, uh, any stories about that? <laughs> I don't know. My mom ran a preschool out of her home for a couple of years. It was super wholesome, but I did have kind of like a crazy dad, so... Yeah. That. I think that's something we have in common, too. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about true dairy. Your father was absent, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Typical stereotype. My father left. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> he didn't even wait for my birth. Homeboy was like, peace! I got things to do. As soon as the plus sign popped up on the pregnancy test, he was like, so I'm going to pack. I'll see you later. Uh, you said it was a wholesome preschool? The way you said that made me think like some weird shit was going on there. You're like, it was very wholesome, guys. It was like, it was like animal sacrifice. They were all making Nikes. Yeah. <laughs> we have uh, karaoke nights here at our house, like on Saturday nights usually. And uh, Kim Han actually come, came to the last one, and she's extremely fucking talented. Not just like good at like uh, comedy and shit, but she has a fucking amazing voice. Like uh, people here, saw, like that's a, that was awesome. It's it great shit. Like, how long have you been? Did you take any voice lessons when you were younger? Uh, briefly, and then I was just in choir. Oh, did I turn this on? No, it's a, yeah, yeah. In choir. Okay. Yeah, just like in choir for many years, you know, in school and stuff. And like, no musical theater or anything like that? Oh, yeah, I did show choir for four years. Nice, nice. People you, are like, what's that? It's like Glee, you know, what people do on Glee. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Pitch Perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't a cappella, but yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, Glee is Not like, as good as Glee acapella, is an acapella, but, is it? Apologize, yeah. Dustin. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I messed up. I fucked up the pro the premise of Glee. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, she she was singing at a house party that I was at last night in the in the living room, 
and I was in the backyard on Molly. And, Kim was? Yeah, and I was completely distracted, and people were coming out going, she's fucking killing it in there. She sunk Sharon. I was like, I gotta get in there, and then I eventually got in, and she wasn't singing anymore. <laughs> and then she was like, I'm out, Rob. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, um... What was your guys' uh, favorite? What was your guys' favorite thing that happened tonight at the festival? Huh? Anything memorable? Uh, when that girl fell. That was... <laughs> oh yeah, the girl fell, and I heard some guy say, "Just go inside." <laughs> Dude, she fell. You were mid. It was your set, and, so? you, and you go, "Well, you ruined that joke," and then you went. Anyways, and proceeded to do the joke still. And then it bombed. <laughs> yeah, because... I bombed at my own festival, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it wouldn't be a festival of destiny if you didn't bomb. If I didn't it. bomb, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. Oh, first, first. I, I, Dude, I thought I was going to bomb. I was so fucking drunk. I was like, oh, no. Like, cause... No, you always crush. You know, you know the, schedule, the scheduling got switched up a little bit, which I'm fine with. I'm not complaining at all. But I was like, I'll have a beer at this time, this time, this time, and then I'll go on stage, and then I can hang out and party. And then when it was like, everything's been pushed back, I was like, well, now it's time for my 845 beer. And by the time I got up, I was like, I'm hammered. Yeah. Sorry, well, I was just going to ask him if he could check if the camera's still rolling. Anybody could check if the camera's still rolling. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll edit this out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, you're gonna edit the story of you bombing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I'm gonna use the excuse <laughs> that I needed somebody to check the camera. That I'm just gonna also edit out the, the the few minutes before that. It's gonna go to a black screen, and it's just gonna be a copy of like me talking, cut up. Like you did great tonight, <laughs> yeah. Like. And I got some things to say about Kill Tony. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they said to you on Kill Tony. Yeah. This is called the Kill Kill Tony podcast. I don't know if you guys know. I re- do any comedians here? Are any comedians in the crowd here that were at Bird City Comedy Festival in like 2012 or something like that? I know, I, Lou, I know Lou was, and I think Rob was too, right? 2000, 2000, uh, 2016. Bird City Comedy Fest is a uh, local comedy festival that hasn't really happened lately, right, because of the pandemic and shit, but... Um, or before the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did like two, and then they, they're like, we're going virtual. They were, they were pioneers in that, in that thing. That night, that was the cringiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. There was a there was a one-liner competition where two comedians went up head to head. There's a giant theater full of comedians, right? Local comedians, people from LA, things like that. They're all ready to watch these this one-liner competition. Me and another comedian went up there, and and it was Danielle RC. Yeah, and I love Danielle. Shout out to Danielle. I was Arce. really drunk. I was. Always when I used to get drunk all the time, oh, I got a bunch of good. laughs. Like it was like a whole crowd of people, like 300 people laughing. But I think they were laughing because they were just so intense because of how awkward I was acting. Like, it was, was nervous laughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when a guy walks into a building with a gun, you're just like, ah, ah, that guy's very funny. Ah. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. <laughs> it wasn't like that. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Okay, so anyways, Daniel RC and you were going face to face. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I think I burped and everybody laughed or. And then I was just had a big. Bu- I, I was trying. I had an empty beer bottle in my head, and I was trying to balance it. It fell off, right? So everybody was laughing until a- a- after I did my one-liner. I said the one-liner where I say, "You know, girls tell me all the time that I look, that I look like Leonardo DiCaprio when he was in What's Eating Goober Grape." <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did that one li- one-liner, and uh, it got some laughs and stuff. But then when the bottle fell off my head, I, I like kind of kicked it a little bit. <laughs> And then the, it just got quiet as fuck. Because you kicked it at Danielle. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, I kicked Bitch. it. At, no, no. <laughs> fuck you. Did it get quiet because you were a prop comic? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you have the bottle? Yeah, they're like, oh, great. Uh, fucking uh, <laughs> carrot top. I'm the only prop comic I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, ginger. So that <laughs> yes, that's, that makes a little sense. Yeah, uh, but uh, I had the, the bottle rolled off the stage a little bit, and it went like, clink, 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 and they're like, "Go pick it up, Dustin." <laughs> and I went, uh, they're like, "We recycle here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was cringy. After that, yeah, I, I you said the most cringe-worthy thing, and you're like, "It's a thing full of comedians and Daniel RC." I'm going against her, and I was like, "Oh, this could be really bad." Then you're like, "The bottle fell off," and I was like, "Good for you, Dustin. You're not getting canceled anytime." <laughs> Um, what do you guys think is going to be the future, the, uh, the next year, two years, in terms of what's going on in society, in the world, maybe just in America uh, in particular? <laughs> this has turned into a TED Talk real quick. Uh, it's like, I did not prepare for this. How can we fix the world? I feel like I've missed can you guys, uh, I, got a, I got a pamphlet I need you to fill out. Again. But, I told you uh, it was going to be a cult. 
If you got one billion dollars to fix one problem, what would you do? If a train is going for only 48 cents a day, you can feed this kid. <laughs> well fed, baby. I <laughs> know, that's why you're so tall. <laughs> We're going off the rails here. <laughs> okay, so anyways, you're, how can we fix the world? Is that what you're asking? Well, yeah, yeah, Rob. How can we, how can we fix the world? What do we, what do, we do? What One do we do? joke at a time, that's how I'm Well, maybe I guess what I'm asking is, like, I think we're, you know, reopening here in Arizona pretty much, but, uh, you know, do you think that people are going to be comfortable, everybody's going to be comfortable with going back to, like, packed shows, packed concerts, packed festivals, no masks, no, you know, just be going back to completely, completely to normal. The ones who are uncomfortable with that won't come to the festivals or the packed shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna have no problem filling up places, like you said. But I, I think at the same time, it set a new precedent. So where if somebody feels like they're like under the weather or they, they have a flu or something, they're gonna wear a mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in 2022, we're gonna have full concerts. You're just gonna see like three people with masks like on, and you're like, oh, they're sick, you know. And I like that. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I think. Fucking China and stuff, they always wear masks whenever they're they're filling a little peckish, and I think, fuck it, we should all do that. Yeah, I feel like that got weirdly political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I am I not an anti-masker, right. guys, and despite right. what my tattoos say. I feel like uh, we've all gotten a lot cleaner, too. Like, people wash their hands way more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like uh, the whole wearing masks when you make food at restaurants and stuff should have, like, a lot of people say it should have been a th thing all, the, all along, right? You know, like... Uh, it's just an extra step to spit in your soup when they're mad at you, you know? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well I did, that, that was a downer. Uh, let's, uh, let's, no, things, uh, things will open up. Comedy will go back to where it was before. It's already starting. Ex yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and the other thing that I was going to say is nothing because I got too high before this. <laughs> <laughs> She's contemplating it right now. She's like, how do we get the world back? <laughs> um, Shouldn't hit the joint twice. <laughs> I was gonna say that's how conceited c comedians are. Is we're just like, when does comedy come back? Yeah. Forget <laughs> everything else, but comedy specifically. When does that shit come back? Because that's the most important thing. Seventh graders shouldn't be able to go to school. But I have to tell you about my <laughs> exactly. dick tonight. Exactly. My dick is angry right now. I gotta let you guys know, you strangers. Yeah. There are some places you go that it's like it's not. There is no. There's it did, never existed like Sedona. I know I talk about a lot about Sedona, but guys, let me tell you. <laughs> That's the There's healing no, power of crystals. They never got corona. <laughs> they never got corona. People are out there, out there dancing on the rocks and, you know, going to grocery stores. Or maybe even, like, like Florida, right? Now. Even Florida, right? Never really, never really, like, fully got to that point, right? Where All like, those people were it. sick from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Dude, somebody pointed out that, like, it's Arizona, Texas, Georgia, and Florida that are like, no more masks. We're just doing this. And I was like, fuck. I said this last night. I was like, I was like, does racism cure Corona? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Racism in old age. Yeah. <laughs> They're usually one and the same. <laughs> um, well, what I usually do with uh, my guests on this podcast is, um, we'll see how it goes live, I guess. But uh, I asked them their top five favorite movies. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd really be interested to see, see how this goes live uh, with everybody watching right now. It's that, once again, might not even be funny. It's going to be, like, kind of nerdy or whatever. But, uh, Dude, weirdly enough, I always have my top five favorite movies. <laughs> like, like, I've been waiting my whole life for you to ask me this question. So go for it. Yeah, top, Let's it, start with True Deer. True Deer, True Deer. Let's start with Rob. <laughs> he, he, he's been preparing his whole life for this, so I can't take that away from him. Okay. True, true Romance. Okay, good, it's good. My favorite fucking movie of all time. Quentin Tarantino's first movie, right? Yep. First, uh, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Okay. Tombstone. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Fight Club. Social Network. Wow. I love David Fincher. Very good. Yeah, yeah very yeah. good top five right there. Social Network, uh, you know, we're, all, we're, we're seeing it come to life right now. Yeah. <laughs> Right? It's Dude, like, wait till one day when Mark Zuckerberg just runs the world. Like, <laughs> how fucked up is that? Like, I think Terminator was trying to tell us that's what we were getting to because he's already a fucking robot. You know? <laughs> yeah. The weirdest thing he did was when he was in his backyard, he's like, hey, I'm, out, I'm back here cooking some hot dogs. Or what was he saying? Yeah, like, yeah he, was, he was like, I'm out here having a barbecue. Like, it, almost, <laughs> yeah. it almost seemed like he was like, just like everybody else, I'm a normal person. I am not a robot. You know? <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm just like you. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't show you. Like, 
me eating the hot dog because that would fuck up my circuitry. But like, I'm a normal person. I swear to God. That's what Arnold Schwarzenegger did. Yeah. I'm just catching up. <laughs> that, was he still the actor? No. Uh, Thanks, no, John, for the weed. The Zuckerberg. Yeah. Um, Kim Khan, what are your top five favorite movies? What would you say? I don't know if I can remember five of them, but this is what I'll. It could be at the like top of your just okay. you know. Uh, too, uh, Sound of Music. Okay. Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Wow. Oh, that's a good one. No, Hedwig, that's and, good one. Hedwig, Hedwig yeah. and the Angry Inch. Um, fucking, uh, Big Lebowski. Woo! Big Lebowski, yes. People yeah. always reference me as a uh, uh, Don or damn it, Donnie. Damn <laughs> it, Donnie. <laughs> um, Amelie. Ooh, nice, nice. Dude, I knew that. Just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but I've, I've known a lot You've of people. You've got a big that, um, Amelie that poster dress like you <laughs> that also love Amelie. Okay, <laughs> sure. And was that four? Uh, that's four. And then a fifth one. Um, shoot, I don't. I um. Yeah. You're doing so good. Constant sorrow. What is this? They sing that song, Constant Sorrow song. Oh, brother, where are that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll fucking. I'll use that one. Very good classic movie for sure. Okay, so you can judge me based on what you think my movie taste is now. <laughs> oh, uh, so. good, good person if I ever base it off that. <laughs> a good person or just good taste? <laughs> that's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, you. both. both, both. <laughs> Junior, what about you? Uh, Ferris Bill's Day Off. Yeah. Nice. Kill nice. Bill Volume One. Okay. Nice. Nice. Ocean's Eleven, the remake. Okay, with all the girls, the no, girls. No, with, no, no, with the, Brad Pitt with, and uh, Clooney. Danny Ocean. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clooney and Bernie Mac and them. Nice. Um, Raising Arizona's good. Fuck Ooh, yeah. yeah, that is a great movie. Keeping it local. And then what's what's the fifth one that I was into? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Fucking oh, Ex Machina is amazing. Oh yes. Have you seen that? Yeah. The yeah. AI film. Yeah. Dude, I tried That's to awesome. watch that and I was just really tired. I fell asleep. I need to check it out again. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of long scenes with like no dialogue. Walking through the hallways. Yeah. yeah. With like just weird music. But yeah. Another movie that's kind of like coming to life a little bit in a yeah. in a way slowly, you know, pro progressively. But uh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is gonna. This is a great way to end the podcast. Podcast. <laughs> I took a uh, gram of shrooms. Or, yeah. What's your top five? Your top five? Um, I've told it a few times, but want me to do it off the top right now? Yeah. yeah. All right. The pest. Dude. <laughs> Oh, I like to party at night. Oh, I fucking love that movie. Everybody hates that fucking I really movie. That I love well. that movie. John Leguizamo in that is fucking amazing and annoying as fuck. And and it's I love it's it. very racist, but uh, it's it's still very good though. <laughs> Stop Asian hate. Uh, but, uh, it's very racist, but it's still very. <laughs> no, it's not like, like you're describing it, like well, friends. Of what it is is it's just you know it's like a earlier time when what, it wasn't. When wasn't that the movie where they had like the guy who was hunting him's son was like a gay German guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like that was a time but John where Lizano, where, like, so he, you know it could just be being gay was like the comedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was yeah, the yeah. whole punchline. <laughs> the character is gay. That's what's funny, bro. <laughs> ha ha! It's, he likes yeah, dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with like Super Troopers, like. One of the characters is yeah. just gay. I was like, "Where's the humor?" Yeah. Uh, speaking of gay, uh, Billy Elliot <laughs> is my second movie. <laughs> it's like Brokeback Mountain number three. No, really though, Billy Elliot is one of my top five favorite movies. Uh, it's a uh, double awesome. stuffed honks number four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Double stuffed honks, uh, Chippendales, or whatever. Um, Magic Mike number five. <laughs> yeah. Um, already. I'd probably say The Wizard of Oz. Uh, I get that, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey. He yeah. Portrayed uh, Andy Kaufman. He killed it. And then Truman Show. But that's, uh, yeah, it's my top five. Very Jim Carrey leaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm a huge Jim Carrey. Oh, I can't believe none of us said Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a, that's a classic. Kind of it's movie. my number 10. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on. <laughs> hey, uh, Rob, what's your, uh, anything you want to shout out or anything like that? Any things you have coming up? Any social uh, 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 networking stuff? I'm doing a uh, Fuego Bar rooftop thing at the end of the month. Okay. Uh, April 30th, I think. Cool. And uh, I'm at Gus's May 1st. Uh, I'm at House of Comedy on Tuesday. Uh, that's it. Cool, cool. Kim, what about you? I have a stacked lineup of <laughs> creating my own podcast. <laughs> um, you are doing that, though. I, well, I came up, yeah. Well, it's called Easy Pill, and... Uh, 
Check uh, it out. It's on all platforms, audio or video podcast? Or? Uh, it's on Spotify under nice. Easy Pill. Cool, cool. So I'll be doing a second one pretty soon if I feel like it. Yeah, you can catch. You can always catch Kim performing She's been taking all over Arizona. Easy pills. Yeah, all over uh, <laughs> yeah. Arizona, right? And you go to other, other out of uh, out of state, you know, other places to perform sometimes, right? Oh, well, I've seen you, uh, I was spending some time in Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was spending a couple months in Denver last fall. <laughs> yeah. The mushrooms are kicking it up. Hot, 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 We're all waiting on <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But after the, oh, yeah, keep going. Feeling, uh, yeah, but, that's, uh, that's what I've got. I, yeah, what's your, so what's your uh, handle, by the way, Rob, and then oh, Kim, yeah. Kim as well? Oh, Rob, maybe. Rob, maybe, Instagram. And yeah, then? M-A-E-B-E, like the girl from Arrested Development. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm just K- Kim Han, K I M H A H N, and then just add, add the S Y. I, it's a silly handle, it's supposed to be Kim Hansy. Oh, Hansy, okay, Hansy, yeah, Hansy. Give me Hansy you know, Kim. I touch people. <laughs> <laughs> Junior, what about you? What do you got coming up? Uh... Uh, oh, I have a podcast that I do with Chris Herb and Andrew Oriano, which are two comics. Shout out, Chris. It's called Coconut Cucks. <laughs> 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 Don't ask us why we named it that. It's just silly. But we have one episode. It's on Anchor. We're waiting to release the rest on other platforms. But yeah, it's a fun podcast. The first episode is called Gay Verine. We go on a long tangent about Wolverine being gay or becoming gay. Dude, I can see that. <laughs> so, yeah. He never dies. Eventually, you're going to get tired of having sex with girls. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what we were saying. I feel like it just came out to you guys when I'm 50. Like, <laughs> like what happened to Rob? Well, he at 50. He just got tired of having sex with girls. That was the plan the whole time. Right? Yeah. yeah. He moved to San Francisco and started wearing short shorts again. <laughs> Well, your uh, your uh, your handle? Oh, it's Chudier Gao, C H U D I E R, and then last name it's G E W, but it's pronounced Gao. And you two, I'm sorry for taking the shrooms in the beginning of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely kicking in right now. <laughs> but uh, um, at this house, we have um, we have uh, karaoke nights on Saturday nights. We have open mics on Sunday nights. We're going to take a little break after the festival. We're going to be coming back in a couple weeks. Um, we're going to have another festival here in June. I want to thank everybody here who stuck around for my podcast. I really fucking appreciate it. Give yourself a hand, please, because uh, you guys are awesome. You guys didn't need to do you that. You can do better than that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to be performing at uh, JP's Comedy Club in uh, Gilbert. Uh, on like uh, check it out on my Instagram I forgot the date but uh, Dude, yeah Diesel out there doesn't want you to promote your shows did you hear that <laughs> also don't step on your phone I know you're on mushrooms so I'm trying to help you out fuck my phone you know what I'm gonna quit Uber Eats right now oh uh, you kicked it at me like you kicked that bottle at Danielle that's like that <laughs> oh my god but uh, yeah subscribe to my YouTube channel um, just uh, Dustin Hadlock. Uh, new sketches uh, coming up, um, and new podcast episodes. Uh, usually about two or three a month. So uh, everybody, one more time, give your big, give a big hand for Rob, maybe Kim Han, and Shooter your Gal, and yourselves. This has been the podcast of Dustin, episode thir- uh, thirteen, and uh, have a good night. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well done. Also, it's Saturday and you do karaoke on Saturdays. What's going on? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cool. karaoke! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you guys. First song has okay. to be a DMX song. Yeah. We gotta pay respect. That means right? I can't do the first song. <laughs> <laughs>